Luke, here we are. We're, we're going to the runoff. That's right. How are things going for you? And what do you think are going to be the issues that are coming up? Or what are the issues coming up as we go toward December 5th? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one, uh, we've got an uh, issue on the national level in terms of the administration. You know, are we going to have a President Biden or is it going to be, you know, the court's going to overturn things? So we're still watching that. Um, and obviously on my race uh, in Congress here, I'm going to continue doing exactly what I've been doing. Uh, talk, talking to every corner of this district, you know, from Bastrop to Bunky to Bogalusa. And uh, listening, continuing to listen and make sure that people get out and vote. We've got to make sure, you know, the, the last House election in the country that's going to be determined. And so we've got to make sure people get out and, uh, and make sure they go vote and, and voice their opinion. How important is it to have uh, agriculture behind you in this race? Oh, it has been a, a, a phenomenal to have all the support that I've gotten from agriculture. And in fact, you know, they came on early. They were very supportive. And part of that's just the experience I've had working with agriculture already. You know, Cotton and Grain Association, they've been uh, great. They've endorsed me very early. I've gotten, uh, you know, so many of the relationships that I already knew that have come on and been helpful. You know, this is an agriculture district, and I'm so passionate to become their advocate. I want to get out there, and I want to tell our story to the world. Let's go ahead and get past the election. Whether or not you win, this seat is going to be pretty important because uh, you're looking at a House Ag Committee appointment mm -hmm. there, for, regardless of the seat. Rick Crawford is poised to become the minority leader on the mm -hmm. uh, House Ag Committee. Mm -hmm. That's our neighbor right there in Arkansas. How, right. how, and, and already, I know your, the, the staff there with Ralph Abraham's mm -hmm. office has a very good working relationship with him. How important is that and how helpful will that be for Louisiana? Oh, it's incredible. Look, our, our district literally touches uh, Congressman Crawford's uh, district there in Arkansas. I know him. I know his chief of staff. I know his, uh, his, his staff there. So I think it would be phenomenal to have someone like that from our, you know, our region of the country to be in a position to have influence. I've actually already met with uh, Rick Crawford and, and uh, talked to a lot of other you know, people that were interested in, in sort of that same seat as well. Uh, I want people to know that I'm going to be in there uh, working and I'm going to work with people I already have already had a chance to work with in the past. Uh, let's go ahead and touch on this this con contentious election. You that brought out the most voters we've ever had. Now we're going to December fifth. That's right. How do you keep the voters energized to actually make it out to the polls mm -hmm. on a runoff election? Yeah. So uh, you know, look, I think that people want to vote. They want their their vote the vote to to count. They want it to be registered. We've seen that. That's why we had such a great turnout. You know, from day one in this campaign, my job has been to go out and tell people what I'm going to do. Uh, what I've already done in terms of being effective in, in Congress working under Ralph Abraham as his chief of staff. But I've been telling voters what I want to do. I'm not going out attacking my opponents, you know, trying to run down other candidates. That's what drives down voter participation when, you know, they don't find a candidate they can be for. That's why, I, you know, I'm excited. I've been able to do that. Uh, whether or not I get attacked between now and Election Day, we'll have to see. But my 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 message is optimism. We have got so much potential uh, with the agricultural resources we've got, the Mississippi River, all that it, that it brings to the, to, to the, the country. Um, I want to energize our voters. That's what I've been doing, and I'm going to continue to do it. And I'm, not, I'm confident that they're going to come out and vote uh, on Election Day. I'll make this the last question, unless you've got something else, or Carl's got something else. But you, you talk about what you want to do, what you're going to do. What do you want to do for our agricultural interests uh, if you were elected to Congress? Look, I, I will tell you, we have had some great uh, some success under Congressman Abraham. One of the greatest things we had, Iraq is now a major trading partner with this country. You know, that's something that we worked on from day one. Uh, and I think we've got to continue to make sure that Iraq and other nations like that are new, uh, you know, new export locations for our agricultural products. And I'll just say, too, you know, I think in the Trump administration, we have had real results when it comes to manufacturing jobs coming back from overseas to Louisiana. I talked about Vidalia Mills. I did a, a campaign ad about it. You know, we got to continue making those those great goods from our raw products. So you know, we got uh, sweet potatoes being made up in northeast Louisiana. We've got Kennedy Rice Mill. We've got, uh, you know, Vidalia Mills. That's the answer. We've got to continue bringing in those companies and taking our raw goods, sell them to the world. We do it better than anybody.